Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the patrons, make sure to subscribe and let's get into it guys. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the T90M. Is the T90M when added BOP? You know, is it going to be overpowered, power creeper or whatever you want to call it? Is it, you know, too much for the game? So let's talk a little bit about it. And why are we talking about this? Why? Well, I already did a video talking about it and Rank 8 was kind of confirmed that they are planning to do it or something similar to that, you know, so we might see these Rank 8 tanks coming fairly soon, maybe. And I mean, the T90M would be the tank for the Russian tech tree. So I started with it. But if you guys like this video, I will do more with more tanks. So Leopard 2A7, the M1HU SEP V3 or V4 or V2 or whatever, you know, uh, the more modern challengers or whatever you wanna, uh, want to see in the, the, in the channel. So leave it in the comments if you like these tank videos, okay? I'm trying to branch out a little bit and let's go. So first we need to take a look on the differences between the T90A and T90M, okay? So yeah, obviously the T90M is the evolution on the design of the T90A which is an evolution from the design of the T-72, right? So uh, for the M, we have the same welded turret that the T-90A has, uh, but with some minor differences in design and stuff, and even some sources claim that it has better ceramics and metal on the turret than the original T-90A, so maybe more armor, but that that is unconfirmed. I just wanted to say that, that we don't know exactly. Um, the hull supposedly uh, has a little bit of an applique armor, same kind of line of thinking that the T90, uh, T72A had it on the hull, you know, so it was just a tiny like 20 millimeter or something like that, but slope it and the way that everything works in composite armor, uh, it makes it so that the T72 basically became invulnerable to 105s to a certain level of ammunition that they had back in the day, right, so these applique armors, they um, really do help sometimes with armor without, you know, increasing the weight of the tank too much. Of course, one of the main things is the relic kit. So instead of using the Contact 5 armor, he uses the era called the relic kit used on the T80 BVM. So it's much better than the older K5, you know. Uh, so it has basically more protection against heat rounds, especially 600 millimeters in the game right now and 250 for APFSDS, so it is a very, very good, um, you know, era that they, they, these things have. Uh, of course, uh, has anti-RPG nets as well, which always helps a little bit on depending on the angle that they are being shot from and stuff against some form of heat rounds, you know, it makes it uh, so that they detonate a little bit uh, before they should, you know, so yeah. Uh, of course, additional protection against shrapnel on the autoloader carousel, so it makes it less prone to detonation from fragments or shrapnel. This is a very interesting thing. Obviously, uh, if the whole rod of the PFSDS hits there, you will, will still detonate. But for fragments, you know, shrapnel, everything like that, that these rounds is penetrating and spreading on the tank, it might not detonate because it's uh, being held by this carousel armor. It's very light, but still it helps for these smaller things, right? Uh, it has the complete removal of the ammo racks in the hull, you know, the, the other ammo racks that are not in the carousel, and they added on the back of the turret with a blowout panel. So basically making one of the main problems of detonation in real life be solved. Uh, if you don't know, uh, the main problem with detonation on these tanks with ammunition inside the tank, um, this was, uh, you know, searched from older wars, you know, using these tanks, uh, by the Soviet slash Russian uh, engineers, they saw that it was one of the main problems that it was not even hitting the carousel, it was hitting the other armors around it because the carousel was so low to the ground, it was kind of hard to actually hit in a real life situation, right? But it hit the other MRX. So they actually removed all the MRX. Now it's just the, uh, the carousel itself on the hull, and the extra ammo is on the back of the turret, making it a lot more survivable, right? Uh, so yeah, with the blowout panels as well. So overall, it has a lot more armor, you know, and fixes too many problems that the design had. But still, some weaknesses, the same ones that they have, um, you know, on the original T90. So the driver's hatch, for example, the lower glaciers, no, almost no armor, but that's 
just the way that the design is, it's kind of hard to actually avoid that. On the other uh, protections, like different uh, differences that he has, it has the laser warning system uh, from the Stata system, so it uses the same laser warning uh, system as the T90A, but instead of using the whole Stata uh, passive IR, you know, uh, anti ATGM miss, uh, missile system, he uses the Arena M hard Q APS, so it's more like the trophy and stuff like that, right? He actually actively destroys the round or the ATGM, right? Uh, uses better thermals as well, second gen, both on the gunner and on the commander, always a good thing to have. Remoted controlled uh, 50 cal on the top of the turret and 360 degree cameras to keep an eye out on the, everything happening in the battlefield. Obviously he has a newer fire control system, stabilization and sight systems as well. Obviously this is not really, you know, a thing in the game, you know, it doesn't change much, but still it is just a faster all around system to actually deploy the weapons. Uh, the ammos are supposed to be a little bit newer, but I couldn't confirm what ammo it is. So most likely they're just using the BM-60 and BM-59, uh, right, from the early 2000s. Uh, these ammos are very, very good. They're on the same level of the penetrations that we already have with the BM, obviously the BM-60 on the BVM, but also the BM-59 that is not in the game right now because it's... Uh, you know, depleted uranium. It's supposed to be a little bit better than the BM-60, not by much, but anyway, probably is using that ammo to certain to a certain extent, right? Uh, for mobility, obviously, also it has an improved engine, 1,130 horsepower, uh, so a little bit more horsepower, but also it is heavier, so it might be kind of the same on the sense of thrust weight, um, you know, so I wouldn't, you know, take my word that it is faster it's probably kind of the same the re reverse speed uh some sources actually claim that it can go to 15 kilometers per hour there are some other sources that claim that it's still the older four kilometers per hour nonetheless it's still kind of hard to confirm it even with videos and stuff in the ongoing war uh, it is kind of hard to actually say for sure that it is 15 or 4 you know so, but it kind of doesn't matter. It's still slower than NATO tanks. Uh, NATO tanks can get up to 30 kilometers per hour. So it, it will still have the same kind of problems. A low reverse speed and also the depression of the gun being bad. So overall it suffers from the same problems as other T-series of tanks, right? Since it is basically an upgrade from that same design. You know, it came from the T-72 still. So it has the same problems that it had before. But it fixes many of the older problems, you know, so it's way more protected uh, with still the same weak weaknesses, but more protected and a lot more high tech stuff. So it has the laser warning, but also the hard Q APS, uh, also, you know, thermals, very good FCS. So everything is very, very, you know, very modern on that regard, right? So after all of that, will it be OP? So, well, it depends, you know? It depends on what it comes to counter. I really doubt that it will come alone, but I think it would be right now one of the best things in the games, you know, in the game. Uh, maybe overall the best thing in the game, but its weaknesses are still the same as many, you know, T-series tanks. So many tanks can actually exploit still these weaknesses, like the lower glaciers, like the driver's hatch, like every, the, the slow reversals, like the... Uh, bad depression of the gun. So although it is probably would be, I mean, right now, if it's added right now without a counter, it would probably be the best thing in the game or one of the best things in the game. There are still a lot of things that could beat it uh, in a battlefield, right? I think the main problem would not be even that. If it was added right now, it would be that it is on one of the best nations of the game, you know, the nation that has the best AE system, that has one of the best CAS aircraft in the game, that has one of the best fighters, you know, the best, a lot of the best tanks already in the game. So that would probably be the main problem with this tank being added, right? Uh, the addition on that specific tech tree, right? And I think it would be a step up, but not overpowered as well, per se. You know, uh, so I'll just alone, it wouldn't be OP, I think. It would be the def defeatable, because every tank is defeatable, right? But the thing is that together with the whole tech tree that it is the soviet slash russian tech tree it probably would be kind of op that's the thing right so 
I mean, as I said, we need to see newer versions of NATO tanks with more modern stuff on them too. Then we will probably know if it would be OP or not. If it was added right now, I think it's more due to the fact of the tech tree that it would be OP than the tank itself. If there wasn't a tech tree to consider, then I think it would be better, but not like too much. And that's where my opinion kind of goes, right? But one thing we know for sure. So if Gaijin really adds the rank 8 of tanks in the upcoming patches, the T90M would probably be the first to be added. Of course, probably together with others, but the T90M is such an iconic tank right now that I think it's just what it has to be added to that nation, right? To Russia. So, I don't know. We have to wait and see. Hopefully, it's added in a more balanced way. I know a lot of people love this tank. I do love this tank. But there's no fun in a power trip uh, without a reason to be added, right? Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe. Let me know in the comments what tanks you want to see in this type of video. I will do the research and talk a little bit about them. And I see you guys on the next one. Okay, guys? So, bye, subscribe. See ya.